to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. I'm Glow. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. Here we are again, and welcome back to another one of your favorite Game of Thrones podcasts. We're the Morning Throners talking Sansa 4. What a great little girl, man. I love reading about her little <laughs> stories. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not- These chapters, Jeff. You don't, you don't like this one? No, that's a good chapter, but it just shows you how much of a little, I don't know, snitch, a little rat. <laughs> I forgot about that part, and I got so mad when I read it. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? I think me? I kind of forgot, too, and I was like, damn, like that little bitch, she did do it. We'll tell you a little bit later yeah, on what well, she I actually mean, did. I, didn't, I, I should have known. Like, It was one of those things where I'm like, that's right. She is obsessed with this lifestyle. We can get into it. but like, I obviously knew it, but I forgot to bring it up in the spoiler section. I forgot to bring it up in the spoiler section of that chapter where she like had that breakfast. And we whatever. talked about but, yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about it then. You're like, where yeah. do you think she's going or whatever? Yeah. I'm glad you didn't say anything in the spoiler section because uh, I was you like, a surprise. I would have spoiled yeah. it for them. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we're we're surprised for that kind of stuff. Yeah, seriously. It's kind of like a, it's like so. The beginning of the chapter is kind of like weird because it's like a mix of her memories over like the course of three days uh, and everything. Well, but like, and and it's the other side story. of it is like it's weird because you don't realize when it is either. Yeah, and we don't figure out exactly. We don't even figure out how she got to the room until the very end of the chapter. Yeah, and that's like pretty important stuff because it's like. Right. It starts out and for the beginning I forgot I thought she was in her bedroom too, but but then the Tower of the Hand isn't the tallest tower of Magar's Holdfast, right? Yeah, I don't think so. So so Kyle, hold on. Ch- uh give me Sansa's uh timeline chronologically from the breakfast with Ned. I think that's the Ned chapter, right? Yeah. Where he tells Sansa Arya yeah. she can go with Syria. Uh Sansa's timeline from then till till like the first day when she's locked up, I guess. Well, that's where it picks up, right? Pretty well. No, it's the third day, yeah. I guess. But yeah, yeah. But she talks about how she gets there at the end. So that breakfast on. So how does she get there? We'll talk. Let's talk about this now. Yeah, let's just talk about All it. Right, well, so she goes off with uh, Septa Mordain, right? Uh, Ned sends her off with her. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she pieces yeah. out. She sneaks away, and she's because she's got to talk to Joffrey or or the king, but not the king because she's scared of the king. So she's going to the queen. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I, I, I remember, but I'm going through her stuff here. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But just like, yeah, so that's good for now. That's a good like so highlight she, for now. She, so she goes to she the queen. She drops a dime on fucking Ned's plans to the queen. Yeah. And go. Yeah. And then the queen. Like I said, I mean that's the that should have been a, an obvious another like another one hindsight obviously, but it's like an obvious prediction I should have made. But it's like because she's so that breakfast. Well, that breakfast was the day that, was that Ned went three to the days throne, prior. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but it was the same day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Cersei was in the throne room. Nah. Uh, nah. With no, no, like, she was with in the gold cloaks. No, it was a different. It was a different day, wasn't it? No, 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 it was the same day as the breakfast, right? Like Ned has the breakfast, sends the girls away, everybody else comes in, and then they go Doesn't to the throne he, room. It's Is the same Robert day. already back? It's the same day. Robert's already back R- when they Rob- had that breakfast. It was the night before. Robert yeah. was the night before. There's no way it was because he already has a letter and everything. Now. It was the same day. So when does he meet with the council? Okay, so I was going to bring this up earlier. While while she's meeting with the queen? He's meeting with the council, you think? Uh, Ned wakes up. He eats breakfast with Sirio. And uh, he eats breakfast with Arya and Santa. The lords come. Janna Slint. Yeah. It's that it's same same day. So he goes day. and calls the council. She goes off they to eat the queen. Breakfast. Well, she goes with Septa for a while and then sneaks away to the queen. So it's like it hard to tell. Couldn't way. have been for that while, for that long. <clears throat> well, that's what I'm. That's why I'm asking because the, what does the queen do then? Right when Sansa leaves the queen here, she gets Joffrey to the fucking throne. No, she gets taken to a tower cell. Not not a cell. Oh, Sansa. No, Sansa I'm saying taken. Cersei. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Sansa. I thought you were saying Cersei. I thought you said what the Cersei do. I'm saying she goes to the fucking throne room and. I'm saying Sansa meets with Cersei her and basically right on the gets throne. locked up after this. Right. Okay. So yeah, is Cersei yeah. locking her up before she meets with Ned? 
like in like yeah knowing what's for about sure. to happen or yeah, is for it sure. after and somehow sansa hasn't figured no, it out absolutely absolutely well, before because so it's wait, wait, when wait. the fighting starts you know i even i don't even know if i have this time time like completely right i'll check let me so, actually check so this here hang on so on the first day even with the stout walls of the whole fest her door closed and barred it was not hard to be terrified when the killing began so her first yeah, day in the her. tower. But that's near her. But that's near her. That's in the she fucking whole fast. That's like right there. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. So that's there, that is, is the, like yeah. she was there and then it started. Right? Like she was in there, locked yeah. in there, didn't know what the hell was going For on, sure. and then everybody. And then was, she like, said she could hear in. screams, groans, and yeah, fucking people begging for help. Yeah. So that was the beginning of it. Yeah. And that was why they waited. And I guess that, and that's when they, the second day, when did they bring her Jean? Second day. No, that, the first day. I think it was that night. Yeah. yeah it was that yeah, night. Ended the first day. Yeah, so I, I guess it's, yeah, it's all, so it must have been before. So Cersei locked her up preemptively. I didn't well, even think like, about that till just now. Cersei but didn't plan happened, on locking like, them up because they're like, all right, there's no escape plan. These two girls aren't going to run away. And then she found out, oh, wait, Ned sent them away. We got to like, lock they come up for, Sansa. They come for, and they looked for they Arya. They come for Arya after. They come for Arya after, though. No, Arya like, was, that was the first before. day, too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but... Correct. I guess we don't know if it was before or after. But all seven of the it was kings... definitely after yeah, Sansa. Yeah, no, I, you don't ever know. Because they I'm, had one more I'm practice, thinking, and then they're leaving at midday. And they're I'm about thinking they're, they're like, if you're Cersei, she's like, oh, well, all right, we already got Sansa. Like, all right, let's go find the other one right now. And I let's get ready you. for what's about to happen. So I think they're start trying to go get Arya while they're chilling in the throne room waiting for Ned to come. No, no, no. Arya down. has to be Arya has to be after because there's dead people yeah. all around outside yeah, yeah. when she's out there. Yeah. So Arya she has saw to be the after. tower guards dead and that's why she didn't go up. So why would they go after Sansa before and Arya after? Maybe because Sansa like walked to Cersei and was like, "Hey, I'm here. Like, we're about to leave." And like, I guess Sansa, I guess Cersei also didn't even know Arya was about to leave until Sansa got there. Yeah, so that was right. already too so late. So she had no reason to even want to capture. But Arya. they could have also waited. Like, all right, hey, once Ned walks into the Red Keep, slay everybody else. You never know what. You never know when that could have happened. It doesn't mean. I mean, I. Uh, so the only way that would happen if Cersei knew no matter what she was just going to say fuck Ned Stark but we, I guess we don't I mean these are all unanswered well, questions well no she kind of makes it sound like she they they weren't yeah but she so, plays a game too obviously she, yeah. yeah she kind of I think she, I think it, I don't know if it's like would you call it foreshadowing but she kind of does what they say Tywin Lannister does earlier with the whole mountain thing Right, it's like you want to be reactive. You don't want it to be like you're the one striking first. She makes Ned. She she does it in a way that she's able to call Ned a traitor, and then she's able to be like, uh, she's she like tells somebody to get Ned, and then like all Ned's men draw swords first. So she's able to instigate it and point the finger at Ned, right? Which is kind of what Tywin's trying to do with the mountain. He's he was trying to provoke the Tully response. Nobody else was really in the throne room to like fake the story at that time. I'm saying, but Ned could just come in and be like, yeah, yeah, what do you want? Okay, yeah, we'll crown you. And then left. Well, and Cersei would just be like, okay, you're good. And we have your sister, you, we have your right. daughter locked up. But and say, no confrontation but say they just all. slaughtered everyone in the throne room that wasn't Lannister. Yeah, they could have been like, what time oh, did no, the like, throne room happen? Ned did this. We don't know. We don't have clocks and shit like that. Yeah. Like, we're going off of like fortnights and two it's week all like, periods. Right, yeah, so it's they're all at breakfast. He went to the council chamber and then he went right to the throne room. So I think he went to the throne room. They could have ate breakfast at 11 o'clock. Yeah. I mean, it could have been brunch. You never know fucking know. We have no idea what their habits are. Well, couldn't have been that like because the, the – Arya had time for a lesson before noon when they were supposed to leave. It doesn't matter though. That timeline doesn't matter. It, all that matters is relative to each other. Arya's happens after Ned's. This one yeah, also happens after Ned's. But like what the event she thinks about literally happen during Ned's. Start during Ned's. For sure. And yeah, we covered, we covered it up to now. So we're up to <laughs> – good. Uh, took us 12 minutes to get here, but we're here. So in short, Sansa goes, brunch, escapes Septimor Dane, goes to Cersei, and then gets herself locked up after snitching that they're trying to get rid of Arya uh, and get them out of there to Winterfell. Sansa is now locked up in the room uh, on the morning of what the timeline that I follow says, 1024, the day that Ned gets attacked. So that, that's when she starts hearing the fighting. She's like kind of freaked out because like even though she like heard fighting basically every day for like her entire life, she hears people like training in the art of Winterfell or wherever she's at. She's like in the and, and she like 
thinks hears about fighting in the songs and stuff. She says like in the songs, people don't beg for mercy or like scream for their lives. Or I mean, whatever. that's gotta be an awful. It's a little bit different when people actually die. Yeah, dude, right she's, outside she's your fucking door. eleven, dude. Well, no, I mean, even like that's gotta be an awful sound. Like, oh my god, yeah. Dude. Even modern, I don't, I don't know how people live in those areas where there's like gunfire all the time. I mean, like, like gunfire's not that crazy, crazy, but like hearing people get shot by a gunfire would be crazier. <laughs> I mean, well, like how we, like how we live in the woods and there's like people just like shooting but guns they're not all the time. Shooting at like, anything, they're not tr- exactly they're not hitting so the buildings like, near you. That's, you, it's that's the same exa- thing. That's what Jeff said. That's what Jeff's saying. Like it's the gunshots are one thing, but like hearing them, like somebody like scream is the other thing. Because like. Sure, they could have missed though. Like, all right, that, like that's my ninety nine percent of what co- of what Jeff shoots in Call of Duty is a miss. Me getting to my point here was true. that this has to be worse <laughs> because that's this is part. everybody is true. just right there. I could pick up the sticks right now and have a five kill game. <laughs> You're right, Glow. You get fucking carried more than a fucking backpack. No way, dude. I brought up my KDR like a bunch. I'm happy about it. We're back from a little discussion on Call of Duty, a little sidetrack from Call of Duty that I edited out. Uh, we're back with Sansa. She's in the room. She was upset. She's thinking about Ned. She's thinking about Septa. She's thinking about uh, Joffrey, and she's pissed. They won't let her see anybody. And then they bring Gene Pool. Enter Gene Pool, and Gene Pool gives her a little bit of like uh, insight onto what's going on. She doesn't say much. Oh my god! They're killing everyone. Dead. <laughs> yeah, basically that's what she gets out of Gene. And they, they cry together Gene. and hold each other in each other's arms for the night and. Go to bed. Yeah, she's the hound like broke down her door with a warhammer. Oh, that's can right. Yeah. What an asshole! Why can't she just like fucking knock on it? Not seriously though. What? <laughs> Why can the hound just knock? I mean, they like they didn't have a key. She probably wasn't letting them in when she heard. Why did you have to break it down? And scream. If, if Sansa's here, people beg for their life. She probably was he got too. Got fucking preteen. I think there. his order was to kill him. No, I don't know. Yeah, the queen sounds pissed that she's alive. Who? Oh, I don't know Sansa? about alive. I don't think about alive. I think she just pissed at the. Oh, they, yeah. they introduced she her did kind of sound pissed. She was. He, she was alive. She was most. Why you ask pissed. me? I would have told you to kill her. We'll get to it later. We're on the second day. Sansa's scared that she wakes up. Everything. Nothing bad. happens in the second day. All that the happens in the second day start is that she goes to the door and she's like, "Oh, the bells start ringing." Okay, so the king's dead. But she knows that she has but to go speak she know to the, the king's queen. Dead? She just knows. She the just has a feeling. Day. She said. She just has a feeling. The third day, the bells rang. She right? said she didn't even know. She didn't know for sure. She just had a feeling that the king was dead because she could feel it in the air. Okay, it's moving on. It was the third didn't, day. Didn't didn't he die three days prior though? Why are the bells ringing now? No, he question. would have died like the day before. Ned heard about it that morning, right? He hears about it from Pysel. Brings him the letter, and he's like, "Pysel, you stay it here." It was on the third there. day, Cause, and then they because all this shit had to happen. So Cersei, like, there that's part of it, man. Like they had to make this sure the she had day. the throne before. Yes, I understand. She had to clean up. That the fighting went on for fucking days, man. I'm cool with that. I'm saying Glow's saying it's three days later. This is the next day. No, it was three days later. Ten twenty four. They eat breakfast. I think it's right after the girls leave. Somebody, Pycelle comes to Ned is like, yo, uh, King's dead. And Ned's like, stay here, bring everybody else. And Pycelle's like, shouldn't we wait? And he's like, no, do it now. Bring everybody here. Then while they're having that little meeting, he gets called to the throne room. This this is the same day, right? The same day Bob yes, dies. This is all one. yesterday. Sansa goes to see fucking Cersei, right? The first day Sansa's locked up. This is all the same day. Yeah, yeah. The next day, that's today. At sunset. It the went days off, the bells yeah. start ringing. I thought it was three days. So but- one day later. So they waited to ring the bells. Didn't Ned hear the bells ring? I don't think so. He oh, got no. news from the steward and says, like, now he knows it, like, it felt more. That's the only thing normal. that was fucking me up because I thought they mentioned the bells ringing. So just one day later. In Ned's chapter. Which isn't that bad. And yeah, Kyle, you're still right. Cersei, like, was wanted to get in place before she did. I just think it's weird that Sansa knows how knows that Robert's dead because like she should know nothing about that, right? Does she I even know she's hurt? Him, and like it was probably so ominous and eerie and just like, I, yeah, I guess you're right. She didn't know he was. Well, she's also or, a well taught lady. She has to know some of the customs, right? Ringing the bells when the king well, dies. Yeah, but listen, like she she she's like, oh, the king must be dead. It was probably bandits. Yeah, she has no idea. Right. Like what? Yeah. Like what are you fucking talking about? How is that the first conclusion you come to? Like how about somebody got married or something? I, I, I anybody else died. Tom and died. I mean, Marcella died. It's just, I don't know. I think it's weird that she immediately knows what's going on. There might be like a certain. I thought it was a weird line. I just thought it was there a might weird be line. like a certain like happiness like. 
bing, bing, bing. Like, oh, that's something good. But like, if it's like, bong, <laughs> bong. Yeah, and that's what it was. Bong. Yeah. You know, so, Slow, endless um, clanging. Yes. Yeah, it was probably just, it probably sounded crazy. Well, yeah. she had no idea what's going on. So the bandits make sense because she didn't know who was killing everyone. That could have been bandits running around and they got to the well, king Yeah, exactly. And that's why she thinks that. So that kind of makes sense. I, I just think it's weird that like she jumps to the right conclusion the wrong way. And I don't know. It seems like a quick thing that we jump over, but it's. I also think it's like kind of weird that she get, guesses it right when there, I feel like it could symbolize a lot of stuff. But it does, it might fall on what you guys are saying that she's a lady and kind of knows a lot of the customs. Like when important people die, you ring the bells. Uh, but I don't think it's that important. Then I don't know an answer. I was just like, no, that was something I noticed, and I was like, okay, let, yeah. I'll see. If and we're spending a lot of time on the timetable. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we need to. So then. And then she's worried about Joffrey. She's like, they get Joff too? Like, is he king now? Or did they get him? Is he dead, maybe? Like, I have no idea. She was scared for Joffrey, and then all of a sudden she's like, yeah, I'm scared for Ned too. Then the third day, action day, Boris Blunt shows up, knocking on her door. Night of the King's Guard. in short. Yeah, comes to get her. He's got a Lannister clasp on his white cloak. Uh, takes her to see... Cersei, and when she's walking to see Cersei, what does she see? Like everybody's on. Uh, there's answer. like a dead body getting lowered. Dead. Like <laughs> someone that got hung is getting lowered into it. And no, no, there's no, another dead one. No, no, no. They're lowering a live body into the moat of. Oh, I of thought spikes. they were lowering a dead body. I thought they're lowering a live body to get a dead body. Does out. it say live? Or are you just like? No, it says they're live. lowering a man to get him to off get the spot. Mean- yeah, he's a worker. To get another body. Yeah, yeah he's a worker getting going to get another body off the spot. Oh, I thought they were just like, all right, fuck it. Let's just throw the, all the dead that's bodies in the That's what I thought, too. Bed. I was like, all right, that's weird. No, no, he, somebody fell in the spikes or got pushed into the spikes and yeah. they had to clean and up. And now they need back. to get the body out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> I, I thought, Chloe, I thought that when Chloe and Jeff thought that they were just putting more people in there, but then I like reread it and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. No, they're saying I mean, if it, there. it's not a bad like trash thing. Like, all right, throw it there and let the vultures clean the rest of them up. Yeah, but it said like they're loading them with ropes or something and i was like why would they put a dead body in there with ropes it's gotta it? smell real bad you can't have people walking by and you know it's a castle even though there's shit in the water streets. on them to dry so them. we get in to see cersei and they meet somebody else at the door another king's or Amanda Moore, maybe um is he like dead face <laughs> is that what they call yeah him? what is that dead face? curiously dead face it's like whoa it's a creepy fucking name i don't even notice Sir Mandan of the Curiously Dead Face. But him and him and Boris bring her in, and they're in the council table, council room, which I, I don't even, like, this wasn't even on purpose, but, like, we talked about this the first time Ned got there, and he was like, it's super fancy. It doesn't even have rushes. And Sansa thinks the exact same thing. Well, she doesn't think about rushes, but she's like, this is the fanciest room I ever saw. And uh, who do we have in there? Baelish, Pycelle, the Queen, and Varys. Yeah. Like the All dressed four. in black. Yeah, all morning. Clothes. What was she wearing? Was she wearing like? Did it say what color she was wearing? She but she was definitely wearing, wasn't wearing black, right? She was wearing black. They were all wearing black, and she had like red rubies. Sansa. Oh, not, I don't know what Sansa's wearing. Because she she's like, oh fuck, I'm not wearing black type of deal. But, but she's probably wearing had, like, like red pink. rubies that made it look like she was crying. Down so this shirt. says she chose yeah. a simple dress of dark gray wool, plainly cut but richly embroidered around the collar and sleeves. That's the first line of the thing here. Is that? now or is that the first day of her being trapped it says i think that's the day she's going to see cersei yeah yeah for sure but she could have been wearing that the same the whole time i think they brought her some fresh clothes i would assume that's always talks about clothes no i think that's what she was saying was that they came for sansa on the third day she chose a simple yeah, dress yeah. she was wearing yeah, yeah for sure i agree with you yeah yeah um so yeah so this is they have like this long conversation the first stuff they talk about they base they, they exchange like the false courtesies, like, how are you doing? Are you doing good? And Sansa's like, yeah, they're, they're treating us well, but we can't see anybody. We? Do you have a mouse in your pocket? And this one, Cersei realizes that, yeah, she's not alone or whatever. And she's not happy about it. Cersei definitely didn't, like, she's really pissed because, I like, she wants to play the game. So she wants her pawns untouched, un... She wants to feed them all the info for sure. Yeah, you know? she and, wants them on their side. Like, yeah, giving her all the false courtesies, being all kind to her this whole time. She she used to trying to get her on our, her side. Yeah, and maybe Cersei's lucky that like Jean didn't really say anything because like Sansa really didn't get anything out of her except for oh no, they're killing people. I mean, I she don't know what else know. she knew. I think I think to me that was enough. That was like enough to know 
Like she could have. Like didn't Sansa figure that out anyway? Like she says that on the first day that she heard like people begging for mercy. Yeah, but she didn't know who was killing anybody. And then she's talking about the hound broke down the door. That's true. Okay, like, I get that. I don't understand what she learns from uh, Jean's and different what she learns from Cersei. But I, I I get what Cersei's upset about. I think I just think that she got lucky that like. A, Jean didn't know anything, and B, didn't know anything. Yeah, I think she just could have put in the thought that that Cersei was the bad person, that and that she was killing all of her dad and her dad's men. Yeah, yeah, that could have happened. That's what I think Cersei's she was a bad of. person. Like, don't trust her type deal. And it, I think I guess what Kyle's saying is it's kind of close to that because the Hound is Joffrey sworn like dude. So like if J- if he's the one that came for Jean, well, and like I mean she just said they, but she could have meant she could have told like I yeah, mean, probably talk about the land. Yeah, she yeah, just yeah, saw a bunch of guys in red killing everybody. You know, Sansa Sansa doesn't play the Game of Thrones, so she wouldn't have realized it. She does though, so she's she's on the side of just trying to get. She just wants to get wed to the king. She wants to be that's the queen. True. She does. Yeah, that's true. She is playing it. <laughs> but she's she's too naive to realize what she's doing. I think. But so, but but Sansa made Jean a, a promise, right? Like we didn't really talk about, it, but when they were still in the room on one she of those three days, she was going to ask about her dad. She promised she'd ask Jean about that her motherfucker's SRC. dead. But yeah, most likely he didn't. That motherfucker, he, he was the one on sword. the spike for sure. He might have been. Yeah, I don't think he was in the throne room, so I don't know if we know he's dead. But yeah, Main most likely gone. Dude, he's dead. Hepatitis. See you later. Wasn't he the one that had the letter? Oh, that's a good question, Glow. Do you know who got the letter? Fat Tom. Fat Tom. Fat Tom. He died in the, th- he died in the throne room, though. Where was Valen Poole? I don't know. He was fucking I went back packing. and checked that. You're he talking was about packing the, the clothes the for the ship. Was he packing the ship? Maybe. He was probably doing something like packing their clothes he or wasn't, something. He wasn't. It was, it was Hullen and Desmond that were in the stables, though. So he wasn't there either. No, I'm curious. He's probably dead. But I I don't I don't if he is I don't remember off the top of my head so I'm putting this in the cop predictions we'll all find out together. Yay! Uh, moving on. So what do they decide? Like, Veon's dead. We all think Veon's dead, right? But like, what is Cersei's whole like? To what does she tell Sansa here? You need little little bird. You need. She to... doesn't call it little bird. She always calls it like my sweet one or like sweet girl or whatever. Sweet girl. You need to get your whole family to realize your dad's a traitor and if they need to swear fealty to us and we don't want any ill will. Um, well, no, no, no. And... We're talking about Gene still. Gene's father. Oh, fuck Gene. Oh, yeah. They're like, they just, he, right in front of Sansa, which is stupid on Cersei. This is part, what I'm talking about. Like, We're just talking about our playing the game and this is 100% open handed, like in front, like, and stupid. I don't mean open handed as in kind. I mean like in poker when you're playing your hand open, right? So like, you gotta move. You can be like Santa. Step outside for thirty seconds. <laughs> Santa's like Boris. Take Santa. Oh, oh, Santa! Quick, leave quick. And then when she gets back, Jean Poole has just disappeared. She doesn't seem to mind anyway. I, I, I I'm. She, he's saying in the hypothetical situation I'm proposing, oh, yeah. where, where I'm like, step out. She doesn't seem to mind anyway. I think so. it's. I I don't know. I think it's a plus. Little who bit more cares at that up. point? I think it's a little bit more fucked up if Santa would go back to the room and see Jane's just disappeared, rather than think that. Littlefinger is going to take care of take her. Take her to her dad. That she, she might be trusting as well. Or just tell her, hey, her dad took her back to Winterfell. Yeah, and then we, then she just lies. That's and true. comes back and then she never sees Jean again. It yeah, just seems weird. Sure. Jean yeah, no, it's definitely, especially because she's like, we, like, you can tell she's mad. So what do they do with her? What, what are they going to do with her, Jeff? They're going to, so Littlefinger is going to take care of her. <laughs> find some place for her. Find, find a Outside place for her. Outside the city. Her. What do we know about Littlefinger? What kind of place do we think we're going to find for a cop? <laughs> Might be some ladies. <laughs> He's got a lot of ladies in his employment. We, we don't know what all he invests in, but we know he does own a brothel. But that one's in the city limits, so we don't know. Maybe he just is like owns inns outside. Inns, just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, totally. She, she can clean the toilets. So Littlefinger is going to get her. Uh, somebody's supposed to, one of the king's guards is gonna go get her and bring her and take her, leave her for little finger, like wait there. And then Sansa's like, Sansa's confused. She's like, Where's Jean? Like, where's his father? Like, why can't like Boros just take her right to the father instead of like little? What is little? Yeah, why is she gonna go to his house? Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's figured it she's out, like, but she's too dumb to figure it out. She's yeah, too she says she promised young herself to too out. young. Yeah. So Sansa promised herself she'd be a lady and as strong as her mother, but all of a sudden she was scared again. For a second, she thought she might cry. Uh, where are you sending her? She hasn't done anything wrong. She's a good girl. 
She's a good did girl. This, did this remind you of anything? It made me. It reminded me of something. And lady. Lady. So She's I got the I got the quote that she cries about lady. No, not lady. Lady didn't bite anybody. She's good. And then this one. Where are you sending her? She hasn't done anything wrong. She's a good girl. Yeah, of course. It is. It's very, very big parallels here. I, and I, I have no that. idea what that means. That's why we're talking about it now instead of the spoiler section and because both those things are happening. But just when I read that, I was like, I feel like this is like deja vu. Because now that I'm like taking notes, I have to read it like really fucking carefully. So like even like shit, like some of the shit like that pops out to me. Maybe it means that they're weird. going to execute Jean Poole. Jane Poole. Yeah. I think I think part of it is also that it may, uh, maybe, but I think also it some of it is also that like George always says like in interviews that he has a lot of trouble writing like the kids because like their vocabulary is a lot less. So like in their own like internal like when he does like narrations that's external, right? Where he'll say like she, like Sansa's thoughts or whatever, but then like a lot of time it's like her own internal. And they don't like have a lot of stuff to say besides like good girl or even like dialogue, good, yeah. bad. Like they don't have like a lot of adjectives. That's why he says he hates right he says Bran is his least favorite to write because he's like one of the youngest. But yeah. I think that might be part of it. Like why a lot? Cause I feel like she says good all the time. Like in a lot of times that's not like great writing, but I feel like Sansa says it all the time. Cause after I read this, I picked it up a lot. The rest of the maybe chapter it's because of her septa training in terms of like, ten. maybe be yeah. a good little girl and be, exactly. you gotta be good if you want to be, you know? And so yeah, like lady she's stuff. being good. If you're being good, you're supposed to be getting rewarded, not punished. Well, it, yeah. Also, uh, kind of because this reminded me of lady. Also, in that quote I just read, she says she promised herself she would be a lady, gentle as a queen, and as strong as her mother, Lady Catelyn. So it says lady twice in like the sentence right before that quote. Lady, I, I don't lady. know if it means anything, but uh, so Cersei is basically <laughs> this is Cersei has this great tactic in this negotiation or whatever you want to conversation where she just ignores every single one of Sansa's questions because Sansa will like ask an important question and then follow it up with some bullshit and then Cersei will just respond to the bullshit and ignore the important question. Give an example because I don't recall. She says yeah. like, "Where are you sending her? She hasn't done anything wrong. She's a good girl." Uh, and just and so she just like little finger will take care of it and like doesn't say like where she said just ignores the entire question like where she said and well i'm sure i'll get into it i, I can give you another example in a little bit just like uh uh little finger will take care of it come here sit down right like just completely mm -hmm. ignores the the question Blow, blows her off yeah so varies and impicel are chilling when she comes and sits down but your boy peter's kind of creeping around a little staring bit. at her like a little <laughs> weirdo like nelson when he thinks about <laughs> Well, Jeff thinks olds. about da Daenerys. Amelia Clark. It's the creepiest stare down vibes. She says she gets goosebumps. She, she feels like, like she's naked. She's naked and she has yeah goose pimples. Yeah, that's a weird. That's a weird line. That's a weird thing for a girl to say to like a eleven year old girl to think that. I don't know. I'm not in yeah, the mind like of an eleven year old me girl. Either, but, but like to be able to realize that, and I feel like maybe in today's day and age, that's one thing. But like, do eleven year old girls think that kind of thing like back in the day? Well, I mean, 11-year-old yeah. girls were – she's, like, getting married and told whenever you and have your period, 20, you're going to have she, a kid. And when she was at the 20, she's like, all eyes are on me, and I know it. Like, it's probably not true because she is an 11-year-old girl, but I guess she does, like, realize yeah. kind of, that kind of stuff, like, attention. But, uh, yeah, he's cre creeping around, and Cersei's like, me and Joff love you, and that immediately just, like, completely distracts her from everything uh -huh. else. She's like, really? Joffrey loves me? But Joffrey loves me so much. <laughs> that's all I, I care think, about. I think Glow hinted at earlier, but it's, like, kind of ridiculous, like, how much in, like, the rest of this conversation she, like, favors Joffrey over... I, her family? Particularly Ned, but, yeah, like, he, the rest of her family, like, she, Jeff... Well, I was talking to Jeff earlier, like, on FaceTime, and he was like, isn't it crazy that, like, Sansa didn't think about Arya during any of this shit? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, that's true. It's at the very end of the chapter. Says the last thing she thinks about, but like, she's all like so concerned about Joffrey. She doesn't even get, she's like give a fuck about her, about sister her future is. life, and she's not thinking about what's actually happening. She don't give a fuck about nobody else. So our, I don't know if she's our, a little selfish. I don't know if our listener Amelia Waldman is still here. But what the hell? Where's your explanation for Sansa yeah. on this one? What do you mean? I, I just told you that's that's that has been her end game dream. For how long now? Yeah, she's, she's swept playing up the Game of it. Thrones. I'm not boys. saying it's the right thing to for her to be doing. I'm just saying that that's what's going on. Is she's swept <laughs> up in all this, and it's like Joffrey is the best. He can do no wrong. Dad just pissed her off, big time. Yeah, that is true. Dad just pissed her off real bad. 
Yeah, let's get it. Let's get so let's get into it a little more. Let's 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 so let's a little more. So let's get into it a little more. Um, what are you trying to? Yeah, so basically, she gets cheered up immediately, and then right after that, Varys is like, "Yeah, your dad's a traitor." And yeah, he's a traitor. Pycelle tells her like, "I saw with my own eyes that Ned promised he would keep the king's children safe and like raise them as his own or whatever," and then like. As soon as he was dead, he tried to steal Joffrey's throne. Thanks like, I call bullshit. Uh, my dad wouldn't do that. And they're like, look at this body. Look at this letter. This bloody letter we got off that Tom's body. <laughs> and that's the letter that says like, hey, Stannis, come. You're the king. Joffrey's not king. Come here. Um, and Sansa still doesn't believe it. And she's like, I need to talk to Ned. Uh, he was like the king's hand and blah, blah, blah. And so she's like, Robert thought, here's another one. So Sans is like, can I please can I talk to Ned? He would never do this. He the king was his friend. And Cersei ignores the can I talk to Ned and says, Oh yeah, you're right. He was the king's friend. And the king would be heartbroken if he did this, but never mentions like the can I see Ned part. Right. She pretty much tells her, like, look, you gotta make a big decision here. Which side are you gonna be on? Well, like at first they're saying you can't marry Joffrey because you're traitorous blood. Well that, unless... they're trying to get her they're trying to rile her up. Well, yeah, they, I mean, they lead her perfectly, but this that's the first bomb they drop on her. It's like, well, because your father's a traitor, you have traitor's blood, and we can't uh, marry to the king if you are if you have fucking traitor's blood. Uh, this is when we get the bomb, right? This is when Sansa, I think, reveals it in the chapter that she came to Cersei. Does she reveal it or does, does she reveal it to her head or does Cersei bring it up like, oh, uh, like, well, no, if Cersei didn't... says it. Why else would you have come to me yeah. and told me your father's plan to send you away from us, if not for love? It was for love. Yeah, yeah, and she. I love Joffrey. So, so here's the quote that here's what Sansa thought was going to happen under Ned's plan. He was going to take me back to Winterfell, marry me to some hedge knight, even though it was Joff I wanted. I told him, but he wouldn't listen. The king had been her last hope. The king, the commanded father, to let her stay in King's Landing and marry Prince Joffrey. Sansa knew he could, but the king had always frightened her. He was loud and rough voiced and drunk as often as not, and would probably have just sent her back to Lord Eddard if they even let her see him. So she went to the queen and said, and poured out her heart. And Cersei listened and thanked her sweetly. Only then, yeah, Sir Aerys had escorted her to the high room. That old bitch. Oh, so I, I have this quote here because this is like where I realized that this probably happened before the throne room thing. But yeah, uh, a few hours later, the fighting had begun. So she's af- first off, she's afraid of Robert. Doesn't realize Robert's dead. Both those things are things we talked about earlier. But here's like the quote evidence that i guess that shows it but she's afraid that like do you think robert was dead already just some hedge yeah, he knight in the been. north yeah, yeah he would have been dead by now or, yeah really close yeah cersei knows his state right very like, yeah, yeah basically dead and she thinks that but she thinks her fate is a hedge knight in the north like i guess kyle you don't really know as much about the politics but like glow and jeff you think that's like definitely accurate? not man she was fucking no. exaggerating yeah, like a motherfucker yeah, she would have got like a at least a lord or something, right? She would have gone to 100%. like, I don't know. Any lord would want the the eldest Renly daughter or somebody. Of, a, of the greatest the greatest yeah. house in the north, right? Renly or Lord, sure, uh, for sure. I think it would probably Dorn. be. I think it would probably be somewhere in the north, but probably like a car Stark or a Glover or something. But yeah, you don't think they would have used it to try and get like uh, another shot, another. They talk about the, that. Kingdom. That starts happening a lot in these books, but like before that, like in the histories, like that doesn't happen very often at all. As uh, families marrying for allegiance, like that, at least in the north, marrying outside the kingdom that much. The north is like yeah. pretty segregated from everybody else. Some of the other ones do a and little it's bit. Fucking but, huge the north land, and Dorne pretty much was. don't marry yeah, out that land. much. Yeah. But whatever. Keep continuing. We're getting off track a lot in this one. Um, <laughs> it's your fault. You started off track. She begs her. She said, please let me marry uh, Joffrey. I'll be a queen just like you. Um, and then this is when they, these three fuck- <laughs> these three fuckers like, give their insight. Traitor's blood. You can't trust so, this girl. So, She's got traitor's so blood. First, Mary says, a love so true and innocent, your grace. It would be cruel to deny it. And yet, what can we do? Her father stands... It's condemned. His soft hands watch each other's gestural and helpful distress. And then this is when Pycelle like breaks in. The poor child. Murmured varies. A love so true and innocent. Your grace, it would be cruel to deny it. And yet, what can we do? Her father stands condemned. The soft hands washed each other in a gesture of helpless distress. The child born of traitor seed will find that betrayal comes naturally to her. 
said Grand Maester Pycelle. She is a sweet thing now, but in ten years, who can say what treason she may hatch? No, Sansa said, horrified. I'm not. I'd never. I wouldn't betray Joffrey. I love him. I swear to it. I do. Oh, so poignant, said Varys. And yet, it is truly said that blood runs truer than oaths. She reminds me of the mother, not the father, Lord Peter Baelish said quietly. Look at her. The hair. The eyes. She is the very image of Cat at the same age. <laughs> All right, that's where I had an ending. Just as creepy. Good job. <laughs> just like these three guys, and just like I feel like it's a good picture of like these three guys. Like Varys, just like so, like kind of like over the top, like dramatic. Like, oh my god, oh, it was me. Like, what was me? Like, I think like when Neg is the into King's Landing the first time. I think when Negus said the first, like the King's Landing the first time, he's like, he's like, oh, we all wept rivers when we heard of the terrors that befell Sir Joffrey on the King's Road. Just like he's just like so dramatic and over the top. Littlefinger is just like creepy as ever. He was undressing <laughs> Sansa with his eyes earlier, and now he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> literally, they're like talking about how she's a traitor, and he's like, he looks exactly like my childhood crush. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I could totally do it. That's what he's. That's what he's thinking. Man. It's, I don't know. I, mean, it's, I, I like that quote. Just, I think it's a good one for those three. It's just super creepy. On little fingers part. So is this one? Um, Sansa just like starts crying. Like, no, I'm not a traitor. Like, I'll do anything yeah, you guys so, want. Jeff, you're wrong. She does think of Arya. I'm not like Arya. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cersei brings it up. She first. has the traitor's blood, not me. Cersei brings it up first because she's like, if we could be sure you didn't have any traitor's blood, but I think I agree Can you with imagine just throwing your fucking like, sibling she's under like, the bus? Like, no, you can kill her. Like, trust me. Fuck my well, so sister. Stop. Cersei brings it up because she's like, she's like, I, like, if you, I want to prove that you don't have traitor's blood, but I even remember like your sister on the King's Road, like she yeah. stuck your, her wolf on Joffrey. Like that proves that you have traitor's blood. She's just leaning into this. You have to prove you don't have traitor's blood by getting yeah. your- Family to be on board with us. She's just like narrowing her in there. She's like feeding her this shit. Playing it smart. So, Sam, so will you write these letters to your family to tell them that we saved you? Yeah, Jeff, you're good. So, yeah, she writes the letters to all – It's who is it? To Rob, Catelyn, Halster, Tully, and Lisa? Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. Lisa. Those are who the four end up going to. Yeah. Basically saying, hey, swear fealty – and we're all good, basically. She, well, the first thing she says, she's like, do you know how to write? And Sansa's like, yeah. And she's like, oh, there might be a chance thank, for you thank and Joffrey. God. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. Like, uh, thank God. The manipulation it's not math. Sansa, like, I guess that's what, like your argument has to be is like she's being manipulated so hard. But also like, and it's hard to know like how smart, like what your intellectual capacity is as an 11 year old. But like. It seems so obvious from like reading it like this, but it, it's hard to see from you Sam. Uh, uh, you can time. write. Maybe yeah. you will be able to marry my son. Oh, you can write? You can write a letter to your mom? Oh, you know what? <laughs> Never mind. We, we can turn this You're whole thing. Everything in. we said out the window. You're good. You're back in there. Oh, I think Don't a lot of this is how blood. kids get like kidnapped, right? <laughs> like that yeah. happened. Candy. Santa, we got some candy in the back of this van. We got Prince Joffrey in the back of this van here, Santa. (laughs) So I I brought this up to Nelson when we were talking earlier too. Like she thinks like, oh, Jane's such a young child, the way she cries. And I'm so like sophisticated. And then like in the middle of all this, like she's more worried about having to like add shit up than actually like what's going on in her life. Like, oh my God, thanks. Thank God it's not fucking adding numbers. Yeah, she's like, (laughs) (laughs) I think we're in one of the earlier chapters, like Santa was no good at that. Uh, so she's like, yeah, write the letter. And she's like, basically say like, there's a couple of things that they want to say. And and it's really cool how like San- Cersei like phrases this to Sansa, but like, you know exactly what it means. Like the version is like, just tell them that they have to come and like uh, bend the knee to Joffrey and then like everything will be fine. And Sansa's like, oh yeah, that just means like they don't want to be rebels. And then she's like, oh, and tell them uh, – that you're completely safe and under my care. And it's like, that is just a hundred percent. Just says like, yeah, Sansa is our hostage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Like you have Tyrion, we have Sansa. Yeah. She's even able to like spin this letter, which is a hundred percent a threat into like Sansa thinking it's like for their own good. And then she's like, uh, she's still like on the edge, of, like on the balance, right? She's like, I don't know if this is a good idea. Yeah, no, it's because when she brings up Ned, she's like, oh, wait, can I see my dad quick? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and speak to a traitor, huh? <laughs> yeah. and, he says that perfectly. I, mean, I think oh, someone no. brought it up. I think it was Nelson. Like this makes you think of like kidnapping a child. Like I don't know if you were going to try and kidnap a child, and they'd be like, "Oh, I got to ask my parent for permission." Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, this stuff still happens, and like, so that that does oh like it is very believable. Damn yeah. and easy out here. The kidnappers nowadays don't have the, your parents a traitor oh. excuse. Well, maybe maybe you're not maybe you aren't the right girl for Joffrey then. Yeah, All right, like I'll I do said, it. this. I don't know. Oh, well, no, 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 no. That's not when Cersei says you're not the right girl for Joffrey. That's not what does it. What does it? And she's like, well, what's going to happen to him? Is he hurt? Cersei's so like, he's not hurt. And Pycelle says the king gets to decide what happens to him. Oh, and, and Joffrey's this is already like, the king. And Sansa's like, oh, Joffrey's the king. Like Joffrey would never do anything bad yeah. to Ned. Like, maybe Joffrey. exile, exile yeah. for a little bit, like, but maybe then I can convince yeah. him. Like even this is like. I can still get my marriage to work. My dad will only have to be exiled for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> like, come this on, is you're great. such a bitch. And she didn't even think of the wall. Like, why not the wall? Why the free cities of... Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, you'd never come back from the wall. So if it's, like, a long-term, like, yeah, I'm going to get him true. back. But, but her first idea was, like, oh, they'll really. just send him back to Winterfell. Like, Yeah. Are she's you like, just, Joffrey was just like, let's send him back. But then, she, and then, like, the whole, like, letter starts to make sense to her. She's like, wait a minute. Robin cat are not going to be happy about this and they're going to be bad and she's like and joffrey i know he loves me he obviously loves me cersei just told me he does but if they're bad he has to be stern with rebels and then that'll fuck everything up so like that's her like justifying all the times he's been an asshole it's like ah oh, he's stern with rebels <laughs> like yeah. i don't know we got to make sure this letter is well well written so like this everything just like falls seems to fall perfectly into place for cersei here because of it well it was planned meticulously. I mean, this is chess versus checkers at yeah. its finest. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, chess versus tic-tac-toe, maybe. And, and like, in the, and the reason she sends the letters to the Lysan Hoster is because, like, even later when they ask Littlefinger, like, his opinion on, like, something else, his, like, only input is, again, kind of, like, Catelyn related. It's like, it's like, uh, the Tullys are important, too. Because they're, like, only focused on the Starks at first, and he's like, oh, yeah, I have to think about Cat and Lysa and Hoster. So L- Littlefinger has like a really strange input in this chapter. Literally, he just creepily stares at Sansa, mentions that she looks exactly like Cat, and then mentions that the Tullys are also going to want to side with the Starks because mm-hmm. the, the marriage. Uh, I don't know. Just so it seems like this whole chapter like didn't even do Littlefinger except for the creep factor. I mean, that's a good point, though. Tullys are a powerful house. 100%, but I don't think it would have been overlooked by Varys or Cer- Cersei. Yeah, or I mean, style. Cersei's got a... It's like it's a fucking wife. Like Lily Tyrion, true, true, yeah. Lily Tyrion is still not even back yet from being captured from her. Um, but so then Sansa comes back to her room alone. No one's there, and it's a little bit darker. She says it's a little bit colder or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, colder. colder with Jane gone. Yeah, but she just lights a fire. You can associate cold with dark. She just replaces Jean with a fire in the hearth and reads a little book about some love Jean's stories. Dead. To pour oh, wait. in and where's John Arya? Quill. And then she thinks about Arya for the first time. Which I, I don't know if it's fair because like did Arya think about her? Arya was, Arya was running for her life. <laughs> she didn't think about anybody. Arya was on the ground floor of war while Sansa is locked away. And she was talking to the queen and could she ask the She watched a guy with a wooden sword kill five people with steel. Uh, Arya thinks about the time that she was in the crypt with Sansa. The first time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Does that count? <laughs> she's sure. not really yes. concerned for her safety at all. <laughs> but not at all. She she's trying to get her. the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know that yeah. she should be. I get agree. the fuck out of there. Worry later. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I think there's... I, I'm not going to push Kyle for anything. You got Jeff or Glow. Feel free to ask him predictions. But I think there's a lot that you could go on freehand. I feel like I've been bad about spoiling stuff, so I'm not going to ask anything. But like... Go. The floor is yours. Well, I mean, Rob and Catelyn know it's up. Well, Rob might not, but he's gonna. Catelyn knows. Hold it's on, up. hold on. Actually, one thing that I wanted to. Point what do you out, mean by that? We talked about this last episode. How Raven or is it Ravens they use or crows? Ravens. ravens. It's they use raven. ravens. How the fuck are they gonna like? Is Catelyn still to Eerie? And if so, why do they send two ravens to Lysa and Cat? Do they think Cat's at Winterfell? And if yeah. so, why do they send two letters to Rob and Win- Rob and Catelyn? They knew Tyrion got abducted, so they knew Cat wasn't there. But maybe Cat's at River Run. 
But there's but an there's there. 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 That's what I'm thinking that the three places Cat would be, they're also sending They're sending a rogue raven that just like hope. They're sending a rogue raven that uh has great GPS and just find they, Cat like wherever. They don't explain it, but I guess we'll find out like in the next cat chapter how she gets it or whatever. But um Well I think they're both gonna go to, to Winterfell. Rob and Rob and her. But in that case you just send it to Rob. Send it to the head of the I, I don't think it matters and I don't know. So Kyle, you said Rob and Catelyn knows what's up. What do you mean by knows well, what's up? I mean up? they know I mean they know that this is this is more like serious Deeper than rooted. Yeah, well, I think they understand the underlying meaning, like what we were just talking about, where she she made her write a a hostage threat in her own hand there with the problem is it. Catelyn doesn't know, like Ned never got to tell her that Joffrey was a bastard, so like that, yeah, and she doesn't know anything. Like all the Starks are dead there either, right? But I, I think I mean this is obviously going to be. The beginning of of the war, I think, is what. So, like, been. also, we kind of already have. I guess the war hasn't started, but you have tensions really high, right? Because like the Tullys already are massing forces at the Golden Tooth. Yeah, right. for the mile. Yeah, the war hasn't started, but now it's about to kick off. Yeah. So Arya got out. That's my that's my prediction on that, right? Like, so I mean, she was already leaving. She's gonna get out. She's gonna make her way north. Mm-hmm. She'll probably meet back up with them. What's in store for Sansa? I think she's going to be groomed to be the queen here, but I don't know that she's going to get. So, so here's something that actually, and this is this is kind of outlandish prediction that uh, that you probably want me to make. But, so I think <laughs> she, she's going to have to kill her dad. Uh, how about she? They make her. Let's off go, Ned. So we want here. How about that? Is there a purpose for it or just like pure cruelty? To prove that she is, yeah. Yeah, man. That's like with the whole Proof chapter loyalty. Here. All right. Uh, so that's Sansa's future. And before they got to the letters, that's what I thought they were going to make her do when I was reading the, the chapter. She's sending four letters to four people. Four predictions should come from that. Some of them might be, some, two of them might be simple. She said Catelyn and Rob are going to like, get ready yeah, for well, war and, so and that would kind of take so care like of the Hoster, other two too he's, he's pretty much dead right yeah, yeah he's really sick. Got a the son or whatever is there yeah cat's brother edmund and so he's he's gonna i think probably maybe push into lannister territory which is probably not the best decision because then the in the tooth more defensible uh yeah, the tooth is basically the border between Tully territory and Lannister territory. But isn't it like a, a narrow pass or something that was? Yeah, like... it's it's on the road. It's the biggest castle on the road along the road between the two. I think it might be like a lake, but beneath it, uh, it's along so the main road. He's going to leave castle. his probably advantageous defensive position and and make poor decisions by pushing outwards. And then uh, Lady Aaron is is uh, or no Lady Lysa. I'm sorry, not yeah Lady or Ar- Arran, yeah. right? Both Ar- are Ar- correct. Um, she's not gonna not gonna care. She's gonna stay there. It's <laughs> a good prediction. <laughs> so there you go. Now, all right, good shit. Let's leave it at that. Kyle made some good predictions. He actually kind of reached out of his comfort zone. All right, Kyle. Good sewed, buddy. We'll see you in the next episode for John Seven. Bye, Bye Kyle. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you in the next one, Kyle. See you later, Kyle. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! See you there, Kyle. Great hanging out, friend. Now on to the Bye, spoiler Kyle. section of Sansa 4. Guys, what are your hot takes for this sode? I ain't got shit. Any comments from YouTubers? Uh, we had one comment by Glad Bandana again. Just said you guys are funny as hell. So thank thanks, you Glad that. Bandana. Uh, we thanks, we Glad. get a few other one-off comments just here and there, saying like you guys are great, you guys are, we like your stuff. We do appreciate those. I don't. I actually don't even tell Jeff and Glow about those a lot of times. They just warm my heart and cheer, make my day. Well, that's um, why we're. Dude, I wouldn't mind hearing about that every now and then. Yeah, come on, yeah. that's a little motivation to keep, yeah, to keep me going. I'll, I'll start telling you guys, but. <clears throat> normally I, I note down all the ones that have something that we need to talk about on the podcast um nothing for this week besides the just a few appreciation posts but thanks to all the viewers for listening again give us likes give us comments we'll talk about all that stuff
for this chapter, let's start off. The only thing I have is um, some of it's kind of relating to what we saw in the last season of the show with what with, with kind of pissed Danny off with the bells. And I don't know if we want to talk about like bells were something that I bells and like kind of brand being the king or those were kind of things that I want to look out for in the show. Um, hmm. Do you guys think anything about I not even relating to these bells, but do you guys think anything about like the bells from the show? Do you think that's going to come into play in the books at all? I have a theory about it. I don't know if I told you about it. Or I not. mean, the bells in the, in the season eight was all about surrendering, like ring the bells. If you're going to surrender to Daenerys and, yeah, and it like, and it flipped Danny off for like no reason. Right. That's what it seems like. Well, she, she, they did surrender, right? They were trying to surrender. Yeah. And, and she they started ringing the bells, anyway. and, she, goes and off. she was just already like, I don't know, and just is so enraged that like it was already war for her. Like she was melting this fucking bitch to the ground because they killed. Yeah, I didn't think the bells set her off. Is that what you're insinuating here? Well, so come. I books. do think it. I do think it's what pissed her off because, like I just said, I think she was ready to just. She was ready to fight. Like you just killed my girl Masande. I'm burning this fi- shit there's to the ground. There's been a whole series. I don't know about theories, but there's been like a bunch of like stuff. Pe- discussions after season eight about like what was the fucking point of the bells like because like the bells start ringing and while the bells ringing danny's uh drogon danny's on drogon and drogon's like parked on top of like a fucking house or something in king's landing mm-hmm. and then you they get that like and zoom she's in already blown eyes. up like she's, she's already blown, blown up, up like the well, wall she's right she's blown up she's blown up like the scorpions and like the ships right. but no like people right yeah, she's she on that took house, away their defenses and then the bells start ringing and you get that zoom in on her and she gets that like eat crazy look in her eye and then what then a great people. look too then oh, people my Lord. right that's like that's also when like john and uh, like the John and all the Unsullied and then like all the fucking Lannisters are looking and then Danny goes off and then Grey Worm goes off and then all the Unsullied, like everybody else goes off, right? But it all kind of happens when the bells start ringing. Um, and there's a lot of like discussion about that uh, from the show. Do you guys think that that relates to the books at all? I mean, if I really had to say it, it was just like she's already made up her mind. Like, Yeah, that's how I thought it was. Like, And it kind of insults her. It kind of insults her that they're not going to fight it her at this point like why kill Masande if you were going to be this easy to just fold your cards like you put all this money into to playing cards and then w- right before the river you're just going to fold yeah, like you've already got though. so much in on the pot gotcha I yeah, understand, no, the, I understand. how do the bells start uh, um, start explaining here so, no, so the, the thing that people what people think is that uh, John Con okay. okay John Connington he fought on the side of the Targaryens in Robert's Rebellion, obviously, right? He's like basically in love with Rhaegar. Yeah. He fought in the Battle of the Bells and was embarrassed. Uh, I forget exactly what happens. Either Ned comes, I think Ned comes to save the day, but I think the Battle of the Bells, I think that's the one where like Barrison breaks in and steal somebody or or no i think robert I think, Ro- I think robert, yeah, who's robert take out that was that was at duskendale he stole he took king Ares back out of duskendale but i think this is different the battle of the bells is somewhere else i'm pretty sure either just robert or ned just beat the shit out of him and embarrassed him and he basically failed rhaegar in that moment and like lost in his eyes lost that that entire war like he thinks if they won the battle of the bells, everything would have been different, and Robert's rebellion would have lost. So he kind of blames himself on it, and people think because so the he's- battle of the bells is where Robert Baratheon gets injured. Right, so far. Bing, 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 bing. Go on. What do you mean? That's it. I mean, that's no. well, Ned comes <laughs> in, saves the day, and back beats back John Con. You got you got the you got the outlines very close all together. You guys got the outlines close. So. Robert is injured, I think, before the Battle of the Bells. And he's in the Stony Sept, and all the village people are hiding him because they're on the Robert Rebellion side. And John Con is like taking hostages and throwing them in cages, like crow cages, and like offering like lordships as anybody will give up Robert, and nobody does. And finally, uh, Ned shows up. And when Ned shows up, all the Septons start ringing the bells to tell his townspeople to go inside because shit is about to go down. So all the townspeople right. go inside. Ned attacks. John Con gets his ass beat. Apparently, Harwin tells Arya that John Con never fought Robert, but apparently, John Con and one of the John Con chapters remembers that he got his ass beat by Robert on the steps of the Stony Sept and almost died, but he got away. So he flees and basically, like, he gave up the rebellion because he had Robert in his fingers and lost him. So, like, it's a huge thing for John. And what happens when those bells start ringing 
in that battle, that means like shit's about to go down. So people think something similar is going to happen where instead of Danny, John Con's going to be taking over King's Landing with Aegon, right? Because he's there. He's at. He's almost going to take over. Like, don't I think we hear that he took over um, Storm's End at the end of Dance of Dragons? Like that somehow they captured it or whatever. So like he's like right there. He's about to be in King's Landing, and if like they're about to surrender, and then like bells start going off, and like something happens, and it just like triggers him. He says, "Oh shit, they're ringing bells. I better attack now." Exactly, because that's what happens. Yeah, that's a good step. point. I like that. So, so people, th- there's, I, and I don't know if this is true, but people think that there's theories that that like, why would they even put that in the show? And people think it's like, oh, because George told them about this plot line where th- th- these bells trigger the guy who's attacking King's Landing, but <laughs> that character doesn't exist, so they do it with with Danny instead. I like that plot line. I like it. So like, I'm just keeping an eye out for bells, see if there's any like symbolism there. Like if bells mean like shit's about to go down or anything in the story. I mean, it kind of does. And, and metaphorically speaking, the bells king symbolize died that shit's, shit's about, about to, to go well, down. Well, here like shit's yeah. going down. Like even though the king is like, normally when a king dies, like shit doesn't have to go down. Like a, an old king can just die. Well, that's why I said metaphorically. Like they're just kind of letting people know, but in the sense of what's going going to happen in this realm, like shit's actually going to. Well, go there's down. also shit going down outside Sansa's window right now as these bells are ringing. People are fighting yeah. each other, right? Like normally a king can die and the sun will just become air, and there's no fighting. Like there doesn't need to be fighting when a king dies. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it has anything to do with it. Uh, next thing we kind of talked about a little bit in the non-spoiler section. How does Sansa know that the king, like that the bells mean the king is dead? I don't think she. She she just had the feeling, which it, it, there's no reason for her to have that feeling. Uh, it's weird. Maybe she had a, a dream that we she just didn't talk yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it, I, I don't have an answer for it. I just think it's really weird that like yeah, like all right, when it, when people get married, when when a king yeah. dies, they ring the bells. Yeah, no, I I do agree, Glow. I I don't know. There there might be different bells. Like they could be playing like a high pitched one for good yeah. shit, or multiple bells like in a in a tune or. This is just like a long dong. ass like, dong. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't, I didn't think anything about it. I didn't think there was too much to it. Just want to bring it up. Next thing I got is for glow. Uh huh. What do I got to explain? One, what's one of the big things that glow always harps on in the four sections? Doggos. Nah, dogs. Besides doggos. Sweet. 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 Yeah, I mean, they said, said like sweet a bajillion times, times in this chapter. I didn't get to bring up my points yet. I didn't pick it up at all. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. At first, I started like all. writing down every time it happened, and then I'm like, it happens a million times. I'm sure it happens a ton of times with Sansa, too. Like, oh, these sweet lemon cakes. Cersei oh, smiles, that sweet and perfume. Sansa oh, says she has the dress. sweetest and saddest smile. Cersei calls Sansa sweet Sansa. Sansa says everyone else is so, everyone has been so sweet to us. Literally, every other word is sweet in this chapter when Sansa's talking to Cersei. Glow, explain and it. And what we think. Sweet means like fake. Yeah, it's like lies. Right? Lies or... are hidden beneath it. Uh, the only time, Jeff, you bring up lemon cakes, that was the only time I didn't see like a parallel to lies was with the lemon cakes. But yeah, this whole episode or chapter, I mean, Cersei's saying, sweet, sweet girl, like you're sweet, but there's lies behind it. Like I'm trying to make you a hostage right now. And that's the whole thing behind it. Like, all, that's what sweetness is. It's like hiding lies, hiding something behind it. So sweetness is all through this conversation just because it's all like BS and it's all manipulation. It's exactly. It's not really lies. Like nothing says, nothing it's nothing, says is it's, really a lie. It's not, not lies, but it's like you said, manipulation. There's a plan behind it. So like Varys, he always smells sweet because he's always planning something behind. Like this, ep- this chapter, he didn't call him sweet. He said flowery. I noticed that. I was waiting for sweet. <laughs> Um, but no, it's it, typically when they say sweet, there's something behind it. I was going to be like coming in here like, okay, glow. How do you explain if you think every time they say sweet, it's so meaningful. How come they say it a million times here? But I guess this entire it's conversation, whole freaking conversation is all like just manipulation. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, I'll give you a pass. All right, moving on. What else do you have, glow? I got a dumb one. Just a question. So twice already in this book, they bring up how Sansa's stupid with numbers. We talked about it earlier. Is this going to be a factor later on? Like she's going to 
need to bring Arya into the ladyship in Winterfell so she can add. do the numbers for her or some shit like that. Like it'd be cool if like she like estimates the number of people in an army or something and like carries totally zero wrong and fucks <laughs> up. Has like a hundred people and thinks she can take I mean, do on, we like, really think because she thinks she has a thousand or something. So what do we think Arya or Arya Sansa's actual like climax to her character plot? Do we think she's like the fucking lady of Winterfell and Dude, she's no, like so, running so, shit? Glow, go ahead. I like so my thing is this whole freaking chapter points to her not being a real Stark. Like, what's her face? Well, B- Baelish even says like she's got the Tully look. She's not about the pack. She doesn't think about anybody yeah, else so this whole fucking time. You're, you're, you're not suggesting that she's literally. You're not suggesting that. No, 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 no. I'm not saying she's a not not a bastard. I'm just saying she's like she's way more like Cat. Yeah, she's got more Tully in her than Stark. She's not going to... I don't... So all the little finger is being a total crazy. It's hard to say right. she's not going to be I, in the endgame, but I feel like she shouldn't be in the endgame. She's, she's played way too big of a role of fucking shit up yeah. that she needs to be in the endgame. Let's go back to Jeff's question. Is she be, going to become Lady of Winterfell? Maybe, and I don't, I'm not going to rule it out, but like, let's think about like her, her arc is one of the biggest different arcs from show to book, right? Like... Where we have her in the book is completely yeah. different from where we have her in the show. And someone who and there's and there's someone in the shoes of the person who where she was in the show. So it's not like she's gonna go fill those. Right. So that's like the one thing in the show you actually feel bad for Santa. Like you could have went a long time well, in the show still feel like bad for not Santa. liking her. Early on. Definitely early on. Yeah. And second Why? She, they, her dad gets her head cut, her, yeah. cut off in front of her. They, her. He makes him look at it's his dad's fault. head. On but that's the, all her fault. It's all her yeah, fault. She doesn't it's know all that. her fault. It's all her fault. It's all her fault. I feel no sympathy for her. She's like it's d- all 11. She's not in the show. She's no, like 15. We're talking about book. Bo- okay. Okay. So talking about book now. I'm though. talking about the show because I said you actually feel – you have to feel bad for her by the end of the show while she's with Ramsey. And in the book, she's never even with Ramsey. The worst thing that happens to her is that her her dad dies, and it's her fault. So, uh, I don't know if that's the worst thing. Let's think about what else happens to her. She gets she goes to the fingers. Uh, I guess there's okay. a lot that she, happens in between. She kind of gets tormented, she gets tormented by, by Joffrey, Joffrey yeah. for a while there. Yeah, Joffrey fucks with her for, I a, mean, month, for a while. I mean, she's not sexually. She get, she's not. No, raped. He's, he's beaten a lot. Like probably a lot off screen too, and like she's made to like look at her dead father's head on a spike along with yeah, like Septa. all like, the time. Like, yeah, there's like manipulate. There's like other stuff like psychological stuff. Again, like she has to get very deteriorated. Like which isn't that bad from with a Ned and point of view. Is her fault, so I don't feel bad for that. Uh, I don't feel bad. No, I'm not saying Sansa doesn't deserve. Like I, I don't know if she. I don't know if deserve is she a good word to use here because she's 11 years old. But like she definitely is the. I didn't say she deserved it. I said it's her fault, and I don't feel any sympathy. I said I don't feel any sympathy for her. I for, where, where were we going with that? Uh, the differences between her arc okay, and yes. the book so, and the story. So regardless if you feel good or bad for her, like in the book or show, like. Her arc's different, and the point was, like, where does Sansa, like, end up? What's the climax of her story? That was Jeff's original question. So, let me remind you guys that she is no, nothing like, so, like, the whole, like, is she Lady of Winterfell? Take a, I want to hear what you guys want to think, think, looking at where she is now. Where, so first off, where is she now? The veil still. Yeah. I think she's going to, there's still a shot that she does what she kind of did by saving John in the Battle of the Bastards. Okay. Maybe she does that in a sort of, like, Let's save Winterfell from Stannis and Ramsey type deal, okay. and then take it over. I don't see how though. What do you mean? She's got a full. She's got a healthy army that hasn't fought anyone at all, and then you just ride in on a battle that both two but how armies are you gonna have get fucked them each other. Behind? I like both of what you guys are saying. Can, you guys just gotta connect the dots here, and this is the climax of Sansa's story. And this is like right where we're at. And I think it, I think in Winds of Winter, especially because I think there's like two sample Elaine chapters that I might know that you guys don't know. So so right now she still has Peter on her side. So Peter's like, oh, I just need to continue to get more shit. Take that, switch it. Peter's got her on his side. Right. So he's she's like, a pawn I'm here. Sansa. She's a pawn here. Sure. Okay. But, I mean, I'm trying to think of her arc. We were thinking of her arc. So, along with that, like, she could be thinking, like, I'm saving Winterfell too. But Peter's right alongside her, like, oh, yeah, you can think about saving Winterfell. 
I'm thinking about us adding it as another piece of my my kingdom war board. Okay, I think I think Jeff is thinking Dream of Spring and Glow is thinking wins winner. So Glow, what are you thinking? I'm just thinking how the how do you fuck get to she, How do you convince Peter? I guess Peter will say yeah he wants to take Peter Winterfell, is but- regent for so let's rem- remember something else. Peter's only regent for like a year for like a year. He bought a year of time in the Vale from the Lords of. Uh, yeah, but now not to say that he can't just extend that come at the end of the year. Some of them are indebted to him, but it's not a long-term strategy. Oh, he's got Robin. I guess marry Robin off to Sansa. To Sansa or Elaine? He he can't marry Elaine. Elaine. And I think this might be. Do you guys know who Harry the heir is, or is that one's a winner? No, I don't know that guy. I don't remember. But yeah, so okay, marry Sansa to Aaron is a good idea. Sweet Robin. Isn't a bad idea. I don't think she's getting married. There's a problem with her getting a married. Funny ending. So there's a problem with her getting married because Tyrion's still alive, but I think this is I think this is I think Sansa getting married to somebody who's in charge of the Vale is a big part of Littlefinger's plan, and getting rid of Tyrion is another, is a big part of Littlefinger's plan, which is why Littlefinger was the poison was the re, was the real assassination attempt at Joffrey's wedding, not Joffrey. I've shown Glow that theory. Glow, what do you thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, you showed I mean, me that. It's I think. plausible. If that happens to be sense. true, why? And he would want to do it because he wants Sansa unmarried so that he can marry her to someone else. A lot of people think it's to himself, but it makes more sense to do it to someone to the veil or whatever, or to himself. A reason people think it's to himself because he is the Lord of Heron Hall. The Heron Hall is like technically right now is the rightful ruler of the Riverlands, right? So if he marries Sansa in either, he basically gets the Riverland army or the Vale army. Maybe he can find a way to do both with the whole like marry Elaine to Harry the heir. You guys don't know who Harry the heir is, but it's basically somebody who would become heir of the Vale if <coughs> Robin died. Marry Elaine to that person, then reveal him as not Elaine, and then marry Sansa to... Littlefinger, people think that Littlefinger's up to this like double marriage type deal or s- weird thing with Sansa. Um, in the Vale slash Riverlands with Heron Hall or the Eyrie with Harry the Air, John Aaron, or Littlefinger, right? Because those are the three lords of those areas. Yeah. Either way, it kind of sets up what Jeff's saying, where somehow Sansa might have influence of controlling armed forces to help the North in whatever state it may be at that point in time, whether it's similar to the book uh, show or not. But I think the climax of Santa is going to be that that whatever that like middle piece is that like we have no idea, but like the, probably this like weird marriage alliance where she's starting to like maybe learn to play the game a little bit, take on some of those little finger qualities. Because like even in the Winds of Winter chapters, like she does not have it. She still doesn't have it. She does not have those. <laughs> I mean, how many Winds of Winter chapters did she actually chapters. get? Though you guys should read them. We might like. We should do like podcasts on them. Read one and we'll do the podcast. No, just I don't like it. Us. I want to wait for the whole book. This is a, I can't just have a, an appetizer and stop eating. You can. I did it. It's great. It gives you just it, it. Like the books. Like when you when you look at them as like a whole story instead of individual books. If, just, if I asked you like where does Storm of Swords end, none of you fuckers can tell me. So like, who do you, why do you guys care if you read like three chapters into the next book? You're not going to remember where it ended. Where Dance ended in two years anyway, or when, two years after the next book comes out anyway. So it doesn't matter. They're one big story. They're not books. Well, you can't argue. Good. So like, who cares? Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I think Sansa's are like climax is somewhere in there. Moving on. Next piece. We dilly dallied way too long on that. I don't think so. I mean, it's a Sansa chapter, so I think it plays into what we actually think of what's going to happen. We right now she's just kind of ridden around with Peter Baelish, who is the other kind of chess piece in this board that we know has a lot going on. I think that the Elaine chapters, like I think the Sansa chapters, are getting way more interesting, even towards the end of Dance or Feast, whichever one she's in. I think those are getting way more interesting when she's like actually in the Eyrie, and like kind of getting involved a little bit with like the the Lord Declarant and Robin Aaron, and like doing her little castle and even life. I think those are getting more interesting, and definitely into a Winter Winter. Uh, basically, I think as soon as Sansa becomes Elaine, everything gets way better for her character. Um, and I think that's going to continue and kind of climax for her probably near the end of Winds of Winter with some of those marriage things going on, depending on how fast that stuff goes. Uh, 
I'm excited for it way more than I am now. Like the first couple of read throughs of this, these books, Sansa and cat chapters, I like dreaded. Uh, now when you go sl- th- slow and actually like look at like the impacts that come yeah, out like of them. Reading this one today even I think. was like, damn, a lot of shit happened. Yeah, definitely not bad. Yeah. And especially when you think about the show, like, there's like a whole episode or two dedicated dedicated to like Littlefinger, like making sure Arya finds the copy of this letter that Sansa wrote in this. Ep- like, do you guys remember yeah. that? Like, that's the whole like that's like the whole like thread that like gets them to like turn on like he thinks is going to get them to turn on each other. I guess Arya's never seen that, right? I mean, that's and true. he knew it was written because he's in his council chamber when Sansa writes it. Right. Um, I hope that I hope again. I, that was a horrible arc. I think in the show, and I hope they don't do that in the books. I don't think it's going to happen. What Peters or Sansa's? Just that whole like Peter trying to turn Arya and Sansa against each other, and then, I think like, they just had to get working. Sansa out of there, or they had to get Peter. They had to figure out a way to end Peter, and that was I don't the best know. way they could come up with it. It was a shitty ass way because he he meant so much to the story. We kind of forgot that Peter Baelish meant a lot to this story. So we just killed him. We kind of forgot that Peter Baelish and Sansa were never supposed to be in the North at this point in the story. I hope that's the reason for it and um, that there's a better thing in the show, but I'm not sure. So you the- think Arya beats Sansa back to Winterfell? Can't happen. No way. Yeah. And does Arya ever go back to Winterfell? I could see Arya. Yeah, I can see Arya just not going back to Winterfell. Like She's going to go kill the queen. She's actually, she's actually well, going to so kill the queen. Arya is like whole purpose through the books was like trying to get home Sansa never really tried to get back to Winterfell like Arya wanted to go either home or do the wall it's real well Sansa's always I think just it was like, really I mean I, I think I'm it really here. turns into Arya knocking names off the list at some point like do you think she's gonna well when she first goes to Bravo she's like well I have nowhere to go everyone's dead at Winterfell I think she'll be in Bravo for a little while longer I like probably too, most of wins a winner. She keeps bringing up this list, bringing up this list. At some point, she's going to start fucking acting on it, right? That's the well, whole the list theory. is kind of taking care of itself, right? Like Joffrey's gone. Yeah, but there's. I don't know if she would count the mountain as gone. She she gets one in Bravos. Well, she still get, doesn't she count about the phrase and she like that? Like I don't. The people who are on her list are different in show and book. Like Ilan Payne's on there. He hasn't got his yet. Cersei's on there she hasn't got hers but like right so let's just think about Cersei in general like that's the biggest one probably everybody else is kind of like just fine. I really hope Cersei like, and Jamie don't die that way in the fucking books yeah me too first of all Jamie is a way better redemption arc he doesn't I don't think he falls back for Cersei no chance I don't know I don't know I think he does man I have a hypothetical centered on this chapter that we can finish with what is different like, I'm just trying to think, like, how would this situ- whole situation unfold if Sansa didn't go and tell Cersei about Arya and Sansa being sent away? Like, what is, does that really, like, how much of an impact does I that think really Arya have? and Sansa like, get away. maybe they no, never. I think everything develops yeah. later. Those two get away, but everything else happens the same. And maybe Sansa I doesn't even get if... away and Arya gets away anyway. So does it matter at no, all so in the I end? I think the whole council chamber thing happens like i think cersei realized oh shit i gotta do this now i think she might have been acting a little bit later she was dilly dallying a little bit cersei was with robert and ned when robert came back and was dying and robert sent everyone away and was like let me speak to ned alone and then robert dies cersei is a hundred percent knows ned's about to do something she doesn't need sansa to come be like oh we're leaving all that tells her is you gotta you gotta make sure you get me and Arya secure before you do everything. In my head, I don't know if she would have moved as fast. I think she still would have been ready to move, but I don't know if she would have had people searching for the girls yeah. while Ned's coming down. Like, to the I front think the room. girls definitely get away, but Ned still Ned still like, gets Sansa's locked not up. locked in a tower before Ned comes down there. Only the girls though. Yeah, yeah, Ned's, Ned's fucked, fucked, but Ned's that's a jail. huge portion of what influences Rob and Catelyn. Okay, but Arya gets away anyway, so it doesn't matter for Arya. And Sansa Winterfell. probably would have got captured. Fat Tom could have gotten her to, to the, the boat, which would have gotten her to the all ship. the way back to the fucking Winterfell. Unless you're storm. She could have got to the ship. Well, no, because Fat Tom, well, yeah, but Fat Tom was the one who was supposed to take her, and he died in the throne with Ned. 
No, Fat Town was just supposed to deliver a letter. I think someone else was supposed to take the girls. Well, there was someone a captain. Trusted. There was a, there was a captain for the ship, but to- Fat Tom was the one that was supposed to take her, the girls to the ship and then stop in Stannis and see no one else except for Stannis and deliver the letter directly to Stannis. But he got killed in the throne room with Ned. All right, whatever. What I don't was know. Fat Tom in the fucking throne? Room? I don't think much much happened. And by and by the think... time Ari gets to the stables, all the ch- all the I mean, I guess that could by that time it could be because of. The shit that Sansa told. I'm just saying. I, I don't think, think so it has that much just of an impact. Acts a little bit slower. No, I, mean, the, I don't either. I think because Sansa's not escaping. San, let's be real. Sansa's not fucking escaping anyway. They're gonna keep her either way. Maybe some fucking Northman makes a daring a ta- escape attempt because she's not kidnapped beforehand. But like she's fucking getting kidnapped anyway, and Arya gets out anyway. So I don't think it really matters that much. So Jeff says it's her fault. I don't know if it's really her fault. This letter definitely doesn't help things, but her hands are kind of tied, and I don't know what you, what else you do in this situation. I don't think it changes much. I, I still think it act it makes Cersei act faster because I don't think she thinks Ned is that deep in the Game of Thrones. She what does knows act how faster fucking- mean? Not be prepared, not buy off the She's fucking prepared. gold She cloaks. already bought, bought off the city watch and all that, so she thinks she has some more time to fucking... If, if Cersei has bought off the city watch before this, which she has, because it was a little finger that did it, then it doesn't matter. Gold cloaks are what matter. If she bought off the gold cloaks already, it doesn't matter. She already has planned on doing everything she's going to do. The only thing yeah. that it gives her is the kidnapping of Sansa and Arya, because she didn't think that they had a way out of the city until now. Yeah, exactly. So that's why she took her time, or was going to. But Arya got away anyway, and Sansa got captured just like she would have, even if Sansa didn't say anything. So this had no effect. If Sansa would have, that's what I'm saying. She acted faster. If she didn't know that they were leaving, but just against Sansa, they're leaving at noon instead of saying acted faster for what? Acted acted faster to do what? All right, okay. Instead of calling Ned, like no, to fucking bring Ned in and then also lock up Sansa. Like they tried to get Arya, but they couldn't. Okay. So, like, they were supposed to leave at 12. Maybe her plan was to bring everyone back in at 1 o'clock. Now she moved it up to 11 o'clock to bring Ned into the throne room and get everyone in. Okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, I don't know. I, I always thought that, like, Joffrey was calling that more of, like, a, I want to be king, but I could, I'm not, I definitely could see Cersei be behind it. Yeah, I, I think it was Joffrey was like, oh, let me go sit on that throne now, but it fits into Cersei's plan, too, so... Either way, I don't Probably think it, I don't think it ends up having that big of an that big of an impact in the way thing turns out in the end. So it's hard to feel bad for Sansa. I think the big problem she does is write this letter, but I don't know what at this point. Like, what do you fucking do? You're eleven year old girl. Like, they're probably like they would fucking torture you. It's like hard to say they're not going to torture you. You're an eleven year old girl, but you're they're going to fucking torture you. They don't give a no. Fuck. I agree. She had to yeah, write I mean, the letter. What, what? How much would it really? Like they could like prick her fingers and she the only thing is if Catelyn had any fucking wits about her. She would have taught Sansa the secret language that her and Lysa know. <laughs> yeah. Before she left. But then, like, when Cersei looks over Sansa's shoulder and she's, like, screaming gibberish, she'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But, yeah. I don't know. This is how we know it was right. This is an okay chapter. Next chapter is a good one. Oh, wait. Hold on. What about Kyle's prediction that Sansa kills Ned? It's pretty ruthless. I liked it. Pretty but, crazy. I liked it. I feel like we all pretty had pretty solid faces for it. Did he say anything good today? Not really. Yeah, I mean, he had he had good guesses about the um, Ed Muir Tully and Lysa Tully. Both of them. Yeah. Were like, when he said Lysa stays, you were like, yeah, "Oh, good like, prediction!" Like you kind of. Well, she that's what she was screaming at Catelyn in the eerie. It's like we are still keeping out of this. Yeah, but she. We're not going to send a single night of the veil. She could have changed her heart. And doesn't that. Edmure t- attack right away? Edmure wanted to, but then Hoster made all the people go to King's Landing and talk to Ned. We hear that. That uh, that Ed- Edmure was really like hot-headed, but Hoster was slow-tempered. I don't know how this letter gets to Cat, though. I don't have an answer for that. I don't remember. Yeah, that's a good... Yeah, I forget where she... Like, I know <laughs> she's on her way. Does it ever... Does it actually get to her? She hears about this somehow. Isn't she with Rob's war council when she finds out Ned's dead? That's Ned's dead, not yeah, Ned's Sansa's dead. letter. Uh, I don't... So, I mean, at that point, if she gets to Rob, Rob has the letter. They can just talk about it. I don't know if she actually physically gets can her letter. Do you think that her and Rob communicate before Rob leaves Winterfell? I'm not sure. How do they communicate, though? I don't know where they she's being. Right. 
No, because they meet they on the do. road. She doesn't they make it back to Winterfell, but I, I'm saying like she would be sending so letters from if somewhere. If she's else. on the road, it's the same problem. How can you? That's how what I'm saying. Like, does she get this at the eerie and send a letter to Rob at Winter? Like, because she sent a letter to Rob at Winterfell before the last Bran chapter where they fought the Wildlings. They said they got word from Cat at, at the eerie. Does she do another that from the eerie? We don't know when she leaves. That makes the original sense. plan was to take a boat to go back to Winterfell. But we, we we know that doesn't happen. We don't know why that doesn't. I don't remember why that doesn't happen. I don't know. We got a lot to read about. Next chapter, John. John, a lot happens in it. They find the dead bodies, bring the de- dead bodies back to the wall. Is this the, the dead bodies or the other one? The, the, the other white? blacks. Yeah, the, the two guys become whites. They find the bodies, put them in the ice cells. John finds out Ned's a traitor. John gets pissed and tries to kill Alistair, I think, and then gets thrown in the... his. He gets locked up in his own room. Not locked up, but told to go to bed. Then Ghost wakes him up in the middle of the night and they save... Alistair or Mormont and then that's the end of the chapter thank you for the synopsis Glo Jeff yes if yes John has Targaryen blood how come when he burns this is a question for next chapter but how come when he burns the white with the flame he like bitches about his hand being his burned hand for the next five ha- books haven't we talked like multiple times at oh that? the answer is because he's a Dane and a Stark and not a Targaryen at all that's a good answer thank you and no, we'll see you guys that, in the next that chapter that one time was a magical event for Daenerys she gets burnt while she's riding on back of Drogon and shit yeah but we know they're resistant because Egg doesn't suffer from heat like heat exhaustion and stuff just like Dunk does and like Danny's fine in hot weather so there's a resistance there but it's not 100% like like you're, you're yeah. good you fucking grab a flame dude you're gonna burn your hand alright he doesn't ever get sick. Never we'll brings up him episode. getting sick. John to Targaryen. We'll see you in the next episode. And he's going to fall in love with him. See you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>